We are back. The fourth edition of Casting Bronze and our man on the ballot today is the, the crime and only crime dog. Crime dog. Fred McGriff. Yes, sir. I think that Fred McGriff is like when you talk about guys that were snubbed out of the Hall of Fame, Fred McGriff, I think him and Jeff Kent are up there yeah, he, as he's like an under the radar guy. They're like the two top guys yeah. that most people go to. I mean, obviously you got like Barry Bonds, but those guys aren't in for different reasons. They obviously their statistics say they should be in the Hall of Fame. They're not yeah. in for other reasons. Fred McGriff, though, numbers wise, bonafide I, Hall of Famer. Yes. So if you're just looking at the classic numbers, like I mentioned earlier episodes, twenty four ninety in hits, four hundred ninety three home runs, and two eighty four batting average. That's unheard of, bro. That's something you don't come across. Yeah, I mean, so he played for the Blue Jays, Padres, Braves, Rays, Cubs, and Dodgers. Five-time All-Star, won a World Series in 95, three-time Silver Slugger, two-time home run leader. Um, Ten seasons with 30 home runs or more. Mm -hmm. Um, From 89 to 94, had the most home runs in that span in baseball. Mm -hmm. Um, Third most home runs from 1988 to 1997, only behind Bonds and McGuire. Um, from 88 to 97, he was eighth in war behind six Hall of Famers and Barry Bonds. So you could say seven Hall of Famers because Barry Bonds deserves to be in the Hall. Um, one of only 16 players to record a 280 batting average, 375 OBP, and 500 slugging percentage with at least 490 home runs. His highest Hall of Fame vote percentage was 39.8. Explain to me why he's not in. I couldn't tell you. Um, he Is was it because he doesn't have an MVP or a World Series? I think I, he does have a he World does. Series. He does. He won with the Blue Jays, right? Yeah, he has a World Series. Um it's this is when like this is like the guy why we start this is the key example of why I think we started this show slash channel is like guys like McGriff deserve to be in. He was one of the most feared hitters of his time, which I mean that's like something to be said when someone, you know, can I mean, 40, 493 home runs, seven away yeah. from 500 is remarkable. Um, with the batting average, we were actually just looking at Adam Dunn, who had 462, which I did not even know. Average, but yeah. he had a 237 batting average. Fred McGriff, uh, 284 batting average, 377 OBP, um, 16 straight seasons of a 275 batting average or better with the power. Um, he didn't strike out a lot. He finished in the top 10 in multiple hitting categories for many seasons. Um, he has similar stat lines to Willie McCovey and Willie Stargell, um, which both of those guys... Every person we've compared him to is a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer, exactly. Every conversation you have with Fred McGriff in it, there is a Hall of Famer attached to it. And uh, he played in arguably a tougher time. So he doesn't have an, an MVP, but he p- played at a tougher time than, let's say, McCovey or he Stargell. He played in the heart of the steroid era, and that's why. I think he just like snuck under the radar. Nobody really paid attention to him, unfortunately. And let's be honest, the, the Padres, not a big market team. Blue Jays, I would then, say. Uh, now, yeah, yeah. I, I would say Blue Jays, kind of just because they're the, the team in Canada. Um, but there was the Expos back then. The Expos were like talking to town back then, bro. Yeah, he played for the Rays, not a huge market Ray team. Was on that team as well. And then by the time he got to the Cubs and Dodgers, he was at the end of his career. So, I mean, kind of not not really, you know, at that point. I mean, even at the end, he wasn't he wasn't awful, but he wasn't who he was. He had 30 home runs. Yeah, in, in 2002 at 38 yeah, for yeah. the Cubs. Um, but, no, I 100% feel like Fred McGriff deserves a plaque in yeah. the Hall of Fame. I do think that he will get there. Um, because I was looking at the voting. Um, no, his, this oh, is no, it, bro. Yeah, no, 2019, 39.8 was his, yeah, was That's his highest. Um, but the commissioner better put him in. Yeah, I was going to say the commissioner has a say. I think he 100% belongs in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I mean, a guy that never had like, I mean, not that I'm anti-steroids, but he I'm never, either, he was he never, never had it labeled. Nope. Never had it labeled on him. Had the power, had the consistency. We talk about consistency, um, has the world series ring. Um, and look at, I mean, let's look at his best season. What, what season was this year? He finished sixth, fourth in the MVP here. Frank Thomas, or sorry, no, Barry Bonds, Lenny Dykstra, David Justice. All right. So, I mean, Barry Bonds is a, is a hall of famer there. Um, but, he didn't win MVP that year. Uh, His better year was ninety two, when he was t- yeah for the Padres, and he finished sixth that year. 
and that behind again Barry. Like that's the, what I mean though. Barry he was behind Bonds, Gary Sheffield, Larry Walker. He's behind arguably the greatest, one of the greatest, if not the greatest baseball player the of all time, all time, Barry Bonds. So yeah. it's like, how do you slate a guy just because Larry Walker? He was in, he was behind him, he's who's in the, in the Hall, Hall of Fame. fame. So Gary it's, Sheffield's in. Gary Sheffield's not in the Hall of Fame. Edit that out. Thank you. He will. I think he. I think <laughs> he's he going to be. Will be in the Hall of Fame, but he's not. Gary Sheffield. He's actually on our thing. He's on the list. Yeah. Yeah. He's got forty point six percent votes the last two years. Um, but no, I think for Fred McGriff, I think he definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, you can't. You can't discredit a guy just because he literally played in the same era as yeah. the greatest baseball player to ever live. Like you can't yeah. you can't discredit That's him for crazy. that. So just because he doesn't have an MVP, I don't think he should be No, nah, uh, man, he did this year in and year out. Yeah. I so for me, the crime dog, he belongs in the hall 100%. Um Cast not only did bombs. he have Yeah, he had a fucking oh that's the first f bomb in two, two, three episodes. Uh, he had one, arguably the greatest nickname Crime ever. Dog. Crime That's dog. scary. That is a I'm dope waiting. nickname. And then he had a great, great swaggy as hell home run trot. As far as like the in the backswing, too. the backswing, the like loop around flip, his head, flip the bat. Started that before David Ortiz. Yep, Ortiz arguably stole that from him. Um, yeah, that's it. So yeah, no, I think that. Fred McGriff, severely underrated player, mm-hmm. um, belongs in the Hall of Fame 100%. I did a lot of talking on this one. Your thoughts on Fred McGriff? I thought it was a pretty fair fair deal. Oh, I feel like I but feel like I took the mic from you. You were very amped, so I just let you run. I, I, love, okay. I love me some Fred McGriff, man. You love yourself some uh, Crime Dog? Crime Dog. Yeah, get Crime Dog in. Get the commissioner vote going. He should definitely be in. 100%. Yeah, like you said, he shouldn't be penalized because he played with... Or alongside the greatest baseball player ever. Exactly. Yeah, no. I mean, there's nothing you can do. The that's numbers like, are there. It, it speaks for itself. That's like people not getting in because they're playing the same time as Mike Trout. Like, yeah, you know, Mike Trout won. And it's won. the same thing with basketball. That's why LeBron James doesn't win MVP every year. That's why Mike Trout's not going to win it every year. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that 100% Fred McGriff, and I think many people will argue that Fred McGriff belongs in the Hall of Fame. Um, one of the greatest... I think to do it. I think he's as far as consistency. I think that if you, one of my biggest things is consistency. And you look at from the time he started his career to really 2001, 2002, the dude did it like yeah. 270 almost at least every year with high 200. I mean, he was, his batting average was great all the time. I mean, he had 270 or higher almost every single year, played 19 a, years. Yeah. I mean that's a long ass career to uh, till he was forty from twenty two to forty. I mean, really, really good career. He um, hit below two fifty three times, and that was in his last two seasons and his second season, basically his rookie season, because he was still a rookie. He, he only played, played three, three games. games the year before. Yeah, yeah. Put him in. Cast the bronze. This is our first. Well, your second one. This is the first cast the bronze. Well, you cast an Andy Pettit. Oh, I did. I did. I changed my mind. So I'm cast. This is my first cast, but I'm I I kind of cra- casted Lance Berkman, but then I <laughs> rescinded that. <laughs> just on stolen bases alone. Also, we just want to say Lance, Lance Berkman. Berkman had more stolen bases than Fred McGriff too. <laughs> yep, eighty six to seventy two. Um, which is kind of crazy because I feel like back when McGriff played, the stolen base was more prevalent than what it was when Berkman played. I yeah, mean, you had guys, guys like, like Ricky. Henderson yeah. Going. So I think it's pretty funny that, I mean, McGriff was a big guy. So, I mean, I don't know how fleet of foot he was. I mean, he kind of played while I was very young when McGriff played. So uh, when he started, we weren't even a thought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, Fred McGriff put him in. He deserves to be in the hall of fame, cast the bronze on that man, crime dog. If you, if we had a vote, you would be in um, any last thoughts on the crime dog. No, I think we covered everything. If you liked what you heard, give us a comment, like, subscribe, follow, put in the comments who you want us to talk about next or whether you think the crime dog belongs in the hall or not. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys on the other side. Casting bro.